Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here and welcome back to my art channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a galaxy pour that was based on this galaxy painting I did just the other day. It got a lot of questions, a lot of interest, I'm super proud of it. So I'm hoping to replicate that as closely as I can on this round canvas, which was very anxiety inducing because round canvases are a little more expensive than the traditional square and rectangle. So first things first, your paint consistency. Okay, screw the white. It wasn't showing up on camera. <laughs> so I grabbed my dioxazine purple. It is probably still not showing up, but it is pretty thick. I like my paint on the thicker side. It is leaving a mound on a mound. It's plopping in there. It's mostly plopping because of how I'm holding the popsicle stick, but it's pretty thick. So it's about one part paint to maybe one and a half parts flow trawl. A lot of people use one to two ratio. I do not. This is the 24K gold extreme sheen. This has to be especially thick. I don't know if this is even one to one. You can see how slowly it's moving. It's important that that paint stays very thick though. So this is the quote recipe that I wrote down. It's just my colors. It's not a recipe. We're gonna be starting with Payne's Gray this is Golden's Heavy Body. It has to be Golden's Heavy Body. That is the best gray, uh, Payne's Gray out there. And did you see how thick that was? It was thick with two C's, thick. And now I'm going to be going right in with my gold. This is what's gonna create the clouds and the craggy effect that you see. It's gonna go around that portal. I don't know why I'm trying to show you. You can't see how much it is, but just those are just very small layers very small layer is white as well. We're starting out with smaller layers here because you don't need a lot of gold. It'll spread. It's it's very, very powerful. This is Dioxazine Purple, Liquitex Basics. I love this color. Very deep, rich purple. One of my favorites. The white, by the way, that I use is always Artist Loft Flow Acrylic, always. This is another Golden's Heavy Body. This is Quinacridone Violet. Again, beautiful color. And I think the Golden Heavy Bodies really help keep the consistency here. I love my Liquitex Basics, but every now and then I'll use a higher quality paint just to see how they react together. This Prussian Blue Liquitex Basics. I don't know, I'm convinced I have something in my paint, but I think it turned out just to be an air bubble, but <laughs> I've had like trauma from things getting stuck in my painting and ruining the whole damn thing. I'm sure many painters can relate to that. Hitting it up again, a little bit more gold at this point. I'm convinced you don't really have to add more gold, especially if you only want crags in that beginning part in the center. Of course, the first thing you put in is going to be Wait, what am I saying? Yes, yes, sorry, I'm getting confused. The first thing you put in the cup is gonna see, be the thing you see in the center. It's gonna be the thing you see last. So I really only wanted that gold in the center. So I don't think I needed more. I did it anyway, just to be safe. I don't really work with these round canvases. So I wanted to make sure it created enough cells. And by the way, the gold and the white have to be together. You don't have to layer them on top of one, like again and again. It doesn't have to be gold, white, gold. It doesn't have to be like that. It just has to be white, gold, or gold, white around the other colors. That is how you get those cloud effects. And that is how you get those cells with the multiple colors in them. It looks like they're shaded. So at the end, you probably noticed I wasn't using a lot of gold. I was just pretty much using up the rest of my paint there. Because again, a little bit of gold goes a long way. So what I'm doing now is I'm just creating a little pillow to pour the paint in. Again, this is my white. This is my Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. It's about one to one and a half flow trawl. That's, that's really my average. As long as you get it to a thicker consistency, you know, it's fine. But that's about my average. Except for the Extreme Sheen, which I make very, very thick. So this is a straight pour <laughs> that sometimes I jiggle and sometimes I do rings. It just depends on how tired my hand is getting or how unsteady I feel. This pour is very challenging. I didn't know how challenging it was until I started practicing this a few months ago. I find that it's very hard to keep my hand steady. It's hard to get the paint to fold in a way that you want to. 
If you're interested in this technique, I highly recommend checking out Sarah Mack. She's the queen of just keeping her hands still while she's doing a straight pour. And she always gets these very fine details, these fine featherings. I tend to not because I do go a little thicker with my paint and I start to jiggle to help it along. As you can see, I'm jiggling a little bit there. In the middle, sometimes I'll do a little bit of a ring pour in the middle. And that's because I just don't want the middle to get all crazy and muddy. I, I just want to make sure there's some kind of distinct shape in there. So it's easier to do a ring pour than it is a straight pour because you're at least moving your hand. You've got a little bit of a routine going on. Look at that patience. I go me. You know, I'm impressed me. I barely got any paint coming out of that cup and it's thick and I just keep going. I keep going until the end. We're not wasting paint over here, she says as she looks at the wasted paint on her silicone mat. Now I'm going in and just kind of doing a little circle with my palette knife. You don't want to go crazy in the middle, but I do notice if you do create a little circle, you'll get cells there because you're mixing around that gold paint in the center. So that's how I get those cool little cells, the little depth you see in the center. <laughs> Not the most perfect pour I've ever done. It's definitely off center. It's kind of hard to keep track of where I'm going. I'm just going to put it back and <laughs> put that back in the center before I put my flow extender down. Look at how gorgeous the pour is. This is when I get a lot of anxiety and I start to lose my nerve. Oh, before I talk about my anxiety, here's my flow extender. This is gonna help the paint roll over the canvas instead of on top of the paint that's already there. It is a little bit thinner than the paint I used. I don't know if, if that is a big deal or not, but I do make it a little bit thinner. So normally if I don't have that paint there, if I don't have a slippery surface, the paint rolls over each other, it rolls on top of itself. I want the paint to flow over this paint and keep its shape and that's why I'm putting that down. And you'll see what I mean when I actually do the tilt. So anyway, about my anxiety. <laughs> when I see a really cool looking pour like this, I get so nervous, especially on a more expensive canvas, especially when I've used such high quality paints like Golden's. Golden is a little more expensive than Liquitex, Liquitex Basics, but I do try to use them because I know that the quality is a little bit better. And don't get me wrong, most of the time I'm using Liquitex Basics. They're, I think they're perfect for fluid art. If you need paint that turns very liquidy, you need it to be fluid like very easily, I think Liquitex Basics is the way to go. But I also have noticed that Golden is more pigmented and it holds its shape very, very well. So as you can see here, I am going so slow with my tilt, probably because I'm scared. <laughs> I am pushing the flow extender off or I'm at least letting the paint flow over the flow extender. I'm letting that coat my sides. It's a really easy way to coat your sides. And I know it, it looks like I'm using a lot of paint and I'm losing a lot. I'm actually not. It's not that much that I'm losing, not a lot of runoff. And if I have enough runoff, I just use it for flow extender for the next painting. I try really hard to preserve that or use it in jewelry or use it in collages and other art projects. There's a lot of things you can do with your runoff. So again, going very, very, very slowly. The, one of the benefits of the round canvas, even though they're a little more expensive, is that you can kind of go in a circle and you can keep doing that and get incredible shapes. You can keep your shapes because you are going in a circle. And I really, really like that about the round canvases. Again, I get nervous because I don't want to ruin it, but I do like that you can get ring pours and even stray pours like this. Now at this point, I'm getting a composition that I really like. The vortex is in the middle. I've, I was able to keep it in the middle, but you have to think, will that amount of paint dry nicely? Will it crack 
Uh, so I tried to get a little more paint off of the canvas, as you can see. I think I probably could have kept that composition. And I really, really liked it. Um, but I did end up, as you can see, I did end up stretching it just a little tiny bit more because I felt that I had too much paint on the canvas and I wanted to get some more shading, some more delicate shading. So the more you stretch, the more of that puffy cloud effect you're going to get, the more of those multi-shaded cells you're going to get. Sometimes you, you don't have to stretch too much and you find a composition you just really love anyway. At this point, I just wanted to get a little bit more paint off. So that is what I am doing. I also feel like I am rambling, so I'm going to stop. Enjoy. Enjoy the slow as balls tilt. <laughs> Look at how picky I'm being with this. I am being so picky. I think I could have stopped about a minute ago, <laughs> but see, I'm, I'm getting more paint off of the canvas. The paint isn't actually moving that slowly, so I must have guesstimated pretty well of how much paint I would need in order for it to, in order for it to cover the canvas, but also dry nicely. So I got a little more paint off. I'm pretty proud of that. And now I am just fixing the composition. I'm trying really hard to get the vortex part somewhere in the middle. It doesn't have to be directly in the middle. This is space. Who cares? <laughs> am I right? <laughs> like, who cares? This is what it looks like. This is up for interpretation. Dang it. So ooh, what did I do there? Girl, fix that. Don't worry, I fix it. Um, I'm just trying to get it nice and round, get a really nice round composition. And you'll see that you probably noticed I only used Payne's Gray once. I made a big deal about it. I told you to go for Golden's Payne's Gray. I only needed it once and that was because I wanted to use that as my first color. You'll see, you'll see at the top of the vortex there, it's actually this very pretty blue that goes into the white and gold. I find that if you use Prussian blue or black, as your first color. It doesn't have that nice shading. It doesn't have that nice gradient. Sometimes you'll get a green, you know, if you mix black and yellow or black and gold, you get kind of a green color. But I find that Payne's gray doesn't really do that. So that's why I use that as my first color. And I didn't really use it again after that. I only needed it for the center. Okay, well, I put it down. I don't know if that means I'm done with it. Nope, it doesn't. <laughs> I never put my painting down and walk away, ever. I always take a step back. I look at it again. At one point, I thought that maybe putting the bicolors, which are purple, pink, and blue, I thought maybe putting those together would be too dark or you wouldn't see, but it created, when they kind of melded together, it created that beautiful pinkish purple color and you'll see pops of that all throughout so I'm really actually kind of glad that I did that I love those pops of it's almost maroon and then at the top it's kind of this brilliant brilliant purple that I really really love okay I put it down again and I'm touching up the bottom. That's a good sign. No, maybe not. Okay, 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 girl. Yeah, do your thing. I think it looks good like that. <laughs> I guess past me wanted just a little bit more. Sometimes I find that I tilt a little bit and then I tilt right back to where it was before. I don't know if there's some kind of catharsis going on with that, but I definitely tend to do that. All right, I think I'm done. I think I'm done with it. I'm no. Maybe, yes? Yes, I am done with it. <laughs> and I am pretty happy with it. I still think in watching back, I didn't have to stretch it that much, but I do tend to like the puffier clouds. Uh, I mentioned Sarah Mack. She gets these very defined, very small kind of feathery effects. I get more, my jam is more of the puffy ones. I don't know if you can even call puffy, but they're definitely thicker. 
They're definitely a bigger shape. So here's your close up. See those pops of that kind of maroon color? That's from the quinacridone magenta sandwiched in between the purple, dioxazine purple and Prussian blue. Beautiful color. I think it really says galaxy. And you see how that center is kind of fully celled up? That's because I that's because I fudged with it. <laughs> that's because I put my palette knife in there and did a little circle. There's that other uh, purple I was talking. That's the dioxazine. And when it mixes with the white next to that gold, it is so beautiful. I just adore it. This is actually the perfect painting for my 10,000 subscriber extravaganza. Here's some pictures. The, the pictures do tend to look a little bit more accurate. The camera sometimes blows out the lighting. I love it. I love it. This is again the perfect painting for my 10k subscriber celebration. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching this channel. I hope this tutorial was in-depth and helpful. I hope the visuals helped. And I really hope you like this painting. I love it. It's probably my favorite up to date and it took a lot of practice and confidence to get there but I think I finally got it. If you have a question, I'll try to answer them. Just leave one in the comments section. And until then, thank you for subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.